inveterate writers they are, have not ridden him half to death every day by themselves, you can depend upon it that they have been doing the same thing by proxy, by clandestinely, clandestin clandestinely hiring him out. At least so I am informed. The result is that no horse has a chance to eat, drink, rest, recuperate, or look well or feel well. And so strangers go about the islands mounted as I was today. In hiring a horse from a Kanaka, you must have all your eyes about you because you can rest satisfied that you are dealing with a shrewd, unprincipled rascal. You may leave your door open and your trunk unlocked as long as you please, and he will not meddle with your property, but has no important vices and no inclination to commit robbery on a large scale. But if he can get ahead of you on, in the horse business, he will take a genuine delight in doing it. This trait is characteristic of horse jockeys the world over, is it not? He will overcharge you if he can. He will hire you a fine-looking horse at night. Any, anybody's, maybe the king's, if the royal steed is inconvenient for you. And bring you to the mat to my Oahu in the morning. Oh, that's enough. That's enough reading for now. Get it, get it if you can. 3-2 pitch. Yeah. On fly ball, right field. Sierra comes in under this one, makes the catch, and is one step closer to a possible. No hitter as he has gone through six and a third now. And Ron Hathie will be the better. Took just enough off of that fastball to Doug Jennings, got him out front just a little and got under it, popped it up. Hassey is struck out and flied out. The one thing you have to believe, a guy that's pitched five no-hitters and 12 one-hitters, that no one isn't too nervous out there. Fastball strike 0-1. It's just the number of games that he lost in the ninth inning last year. I think he's been there enough that uh, no, it probably wouldn't bother him. He might not even think about it to two outs in the ninth inning. Well, he's probably been this close a lot of times. Fastball just misses for a ball, one and one. I would think, too, that not that Denkinger isn't calling the pitches as he sees them here, but I would think that as this game progresses now, that the strike zone would widen just a little bit for Ryan, if it hasn't already. One, one pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Team doesn't like to be no hit, but it's almost like a. I don't know. It's, a, it's a, almost an honor to go in a game against Ryan and have it happen. Pitches outside for a ball, two and two. Well, Ken Phelps, who broke up Ryan Holmans, he is down on the runway with a bat. I don't know when he would be called upon, perhaps to pinch hit, but he is trying to. Stand down on the runway and look at Nolan Ryan, get the release point, try to get an idea. Two and two count to Hassey. And Ryan's two, two pitches outside, ball three. Well, he's starting to, and now I noticed that when he threw that pitch, he reached back, sort of grabbed his back. I don't know if he was pulling on his shirt or what, but he just reached back to his back. And, but he's going, uh, starting to get some three, two counts now. And a couple of things about that. Number one, it, it uh, is going to means he's throwing more pitches. Number two, it, he's losing a little bit of control of the pitches that he's had. Three, two, swing and a miss. He's struck him out. Foul shifted into the catcher's miss. So Hassey becomes strikeout number ten. I'm not so sure that might not have been ball four. It was a fastball that was up. And it was ball four. It was. Pitch that was up, but then 
glasses down there. <laughs> Felix Jose now, and the fans, they're going to get into it. They're going to start getting into it here now. Here's the pitch to Jose. He swings and misses strike one. Fans were reacting to something else just then. I don't know what it was. Lady might have fallen down the stairs. Or something. <laughs> Pitch is low for a ball, and it's one and one. Five nothing. The Rangers lead. Two outs here in the seventh. Ryan has allowed just two walks through the first six and two thirds. Low for a ball. It's two and one. They still yelling after every pitch anywhere. <laughs> takes his cap off and walks around. It's a cool enough evening that it's not like pitching in Texas where he's humidity and heat bothering. Swing and a miss, the breaking ball, and it's two and two. The thing about Ryan is if he does lose a little bit off his fastball here, he's got that outstanding curveball that he can throw. Throwing the big motion at the hitters and he takes us something off with the changeup. He's, he's not a one-pitch pitcher. He can rely or does not have to rely just on the one. He has Jose and a 2-2 two -two count. Fastball outside for a three and two. Ryan is taking a little more time in between pitches, more and more time now. I think that maybe he's centered his mind that there's a strong possibility he could pitch number six here tonight. I wonder how much is in his mind about his back or something bothering yeah, him might. at this point. And Could be. Three and two. Swing and a foul and it stays at three and two. And well, it, yes, you, you, you get so close and now it's a matter of how far does he want to push himself. If, if there was a problem right. with his back. Right. He has struck out ten. He's walked two. Three and two to Jose. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Number 11 for Ryan, and he goes through seven. As we've completed seven, it is five to nothing, Rangers. In a hiring a horse for Mechanica, you might, must have all your eyes about you, because you can rest satisfied that you are dealing with a shrewd, unprincipled rascal. You may leave your door open and your trunk unlocked as long as you please. And he will not meddle with your property, but has no important vices and no inclination to commit robbery on a large scale. But if he can get ahead of you in the horse business, he will take a genuine delight in doing it. This trait is characteristic of horse jockeys the world over, is it not? He will overcharge you if he can. He will hire you a fine-looking horse at night. Anybody's. Maybe the king's. If the royal steed be in convenient view. And bring you the mate to my wahoo in the morning and contend that it is the same animal. If you make trouble, he will get out of by saying it was not himself who made the bargain with you, but his brother, who went out of the country this morning. <laughs> There have al they have always got a brother to shift the responsibility upon. A victim said to one of these fellows one day, But I know I hired the horse of you because I noticed that scar on your cheek. The, pry was, the reply was not bad. Oh yes, yes, my brother, all same, we twins. A friend of mine... J. Smith hired a horse yesterday, the Kanaka warranting him to be in excellent condition. Smith had a saddle and blanket of his own, and he ordered the Kanaka to put these on the horse. The Kanaka protested that he was perfectly willing to trust the gentleman with the saddle that was already on the animal, but Smith refused to use it. The change was made. Then Smith noticed that the Kanaka had changed 
only the saddles and had left the original blanket on the horse. He said he forgot to change the blankets. And so, to cut the bother short, Smith nodded and rode away. The horse went lame a mile from town and afterward got to cutting up some extraordinary capers. Smith got down and took off the saddle, but the blanket stuck fast to the horse, glued to a precision of raw places. Mechanica's mysterious conduct stood explained. Woo! <laughs> Yow!